In the decades following the war, the old neighborhoods prospered. The gardens were as long as the back ground or back yards would allow them to be. Otherwise, they would have been into the river. That's how far back they went. So every little space of area on Water Street that they had as a free yard went to a garden. But it was a situation that, unbeknownst to the people of Corning, was fated to be short-lived. The single greatest catastrophe to hit the city of Corning was the 1972 flood caused by Hurricane Agnes. Oh, the flood was terrible. It was graduation night at uh, St. Vincent's, and when we got uh, on Bridge Street, near the bridge, the water was right up to the end right here. Oh, my heaven. So when the waters came, at the time, Mayor Nassau indicated that we would only get waters in our cellars and the dikes would hold. Well, it didn't look like it was going to be that way, so I, I believe at that time I, sent, I told my wife, Teresa, to, to go up and stay with Mom, who lived on First Street. And then the next thing I knew, my son, my oldest son, Martin, came up and shook me up, woke me up, and said, Dad, you got to get out of here. Well, water's coming in. So at the time, while we were going, coming out, water was coming up the stair, our stairway. So we, we waded out of the water. And, uh, and at that time, we had to look out the window. You remember that, Teresa? And you had the Erie Bridge, Railroad Bridge. And what they had done is they had put car, railroad cars loaded with coal on top to keep it down. But it, it was awesome. The power of that water, you just could see the bridge just, just turned right over and went down just like that. It was, it was, I get chills thinking about it right now. We did see the bridge go down, the railroad bridge that I'm talking about. That went down. And then um, Nikki Merola and I decided we'd go to work. We were working at, down at uh, Big Flats. And of course, they, <laughs> so he kept, picks me up and we go down there and they, they said, where are you going? We got down there and they said, well, we come to work. He said, factory's closed. <laughs> Nobody in there to run it. <laughs> but we went down because we, we didn't have any water here. You know, we we're up on the hill. So we had more than water in our cellar. In fact, uh, the picture I showed you shows where at one time the water went up to the, to the second story of my home. Well, all the homes on Water Street. The flood completely destroyed the Water Street neighborhood. Houses were flooded to their second story. Though about 122 people on the East Coast were killed in the flood, everyone living on Water Street survived. The fear and grief caused by so much loss still lingers in parts of the city. We cried when we left Water Street because it was really, uh, like, like I said, one big family. It was very nice. The flood subsided, and then I came back and went down to Water Street and walked through the house, and unbelievable, unbelievable. You think all the memories you had in that place. Of course, now I walk over to Wegmans and stand there by Pole 13, because that's where my house was, and I'm trying to feel the vibes of being in the same spot where <laughs> I've spent 20 years of my life but uh, nothing happens.